in the red. The return of our French Zerg player. It is Kenzie. And in the top left is the Chilean Terran Ultra. I'm pretty excited to see a French player again, man. There's uh... there aren't many. I, I mean, actually can't even there's think what Kenzie, one. then there's Sarens. Sarens. There's a name that I haven't heard in literally ten years. Like, other than like that, old, yeah. Other than that, I mean, there was uh, oh, there was a Bundy. lot of proto or uh, there was a lot of uh, there was like nin that ninja guy, I think. Ninja. Yeah. Then there was a uh, oh, uh, it starts with an M. Remember, and he was a Zerg player, and he like did all the StarCraft two events. Moman's. Oh, Mo Man. Yes, I remember Mo Man because he always wears that Mario hat, the, the, <laughs> yeah. Go the Goomba hat. He's always wearing that. And then but there's uh, Adel Scott. Okay, but Adel Scott. Yes, actually, I saw him playing ladder maybe a few months ago. Yeah, he played. He was playing in a Ghost League. Okay, he was also playing ladder and uh, complaining about stream snipes. So, <laughs> uh, actually, another. <laughs> French player that I remember is Bundy. I don't need. I don't even know if people are going to recognize that name, but I think he was like one of the early WCG players. Uh, but other than those five, I guess. We I mean, there's Elki, there. obviously too. Okay, of course Elki, but I mean, we're going into the fossil era, right? Like, I'm surprised you. Well, know you that just. Name. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about Ultra's build because I told you pretty much earlier on that Kenzie play is pretty standard in ZVT, I think. Now, Ultra, I don't think there's any doubt here that there is not going to be mech play because I've seen Ultra almost every single season of BSL, and every single time I've seen him play TVZ, he's been hard on the bio, like seven barracks on one base. He goes really, really hard on bio. So if we see anything other than that, I would be shocked. Now, I want to know what the answer here is for Kenzie. Are we going to have a three hatch opener? Yep. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the case because there is no gasp just yet. I like Kenzie's drone scout too, kind of checked the middle and then uh, uh, wrapped around bottom left. So, kind of, I mean, he knows what's up now because he sees the racks. He doesn't see the gas here from Ultra. Ultra, though, not double scouting. And his initial scout is a bit late, actually. Like, it wasn't a 12 scout, I don't think. So, this is... I'm surprised, man. You know, generally when you're in these positions, there's two things you can do if you're ultra. If you scout top left and you don't see the overlord, just go bottom right and assume a standard scout path from Zerg. Or you double scout. He's putting down his command center without even confirming a hatchery. So, this is incredibly risky. I mean, this is, if this was 9 pool, game's like over. Fortunately for him, Kenzie's playing standard, but... Yeah, this is the Nyokan move where I don't care what you're playing. I'm just going to go with my build. And if it's a 9 pull, well, I'm just out of there. So, <laughs> Ultra actually getting a bit lucky here. We saw SPX go for the double scout. That's really what you should do to make sure that you don't die to any initial pool opener. We see that, of course, he's not going to get punished this time. All eyes are really on Ultra's main. Is he going to put down a second barracks? Is he going to put down a quick gas going to that academy play? Is he going to go for plus one really quickly? Now the Lings get into position and deny the scout into the main. So Ultra's going to be into, in the dark. And usually when you're in the dark, that means you're going to go into an academy opener. Well, looking at his build, does he even have a second? No. Okay. This is... Uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is... That's going to be an academy. That's an academy for sure. I think. That's There's gonna be no way either. it's not. There's no way. If this isn't an academy, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> well, four minutes is kind of the number that I like for building the academy. The thing is, and like... There it is. There we go. Okay. Thank God. I mean, at least this makes more sense. The reality, though, is it's just more efficient to go for... To cut marines, skip your third depot, get first, get second racks, and then academy. Like that's just the best way to do this. But you know, this way that Ultra is doing it is very safe. I will give him that. So it's because you have a lot more marines than normally you would uh, early on. So it's very safe versus early, early link busts. But 
I mean, Kenzie, very standard player, doesn't quite go for it, and he, he even scouted three hatch, so... Actually, three hatch, this build is not very good against it. And so there is the Spire standard opener from Kenzie with the three hatch play. Meanwhile, SCV is most likely going to get picked off those on those on by those two links on hold position. Back in Ultra's main, we don't see any additional barracks coming down. I don't see an eBay either, so he's getting very... Okay, there's eBay. It actually was halfway done, so he's not super greedy. Yeah, the, this is where it starts to hurt to have just the one racks production, because right now you would have two racks. It would be very easy to pump out the medics and stuff but you know so far i mean it's not really that bad and this is again three hatch spire so the mulesks are you know generally the mulesks would be hatching right about now um but that's not gonna be the case so i wouldn't be surprised to see two more racks get added here for a total of four that's gonna be a really nice uh opening from ultra kenzie we'll have to see here how he chooses to play this three hatch because again this is a bit off meta now the three hatch, what's nice about it is that you can kind of consistently get those nine mutalisks out, which is a, it's a really strong number of mutalisks. And a lot of Terrans that are used to playing against two hatchery, they might skimp out on turrets. And you have to remember if, if Zerg comes into your base with nine mutas plus the two more coming in after, so you get up to 11 really fast, you need way more turrets than normal. So that might be a way to catch ultra off guard. And also, with that third hatch being a production hatchery and the higher drone count, generally you're, uh, you know, you could have like a significant amount of mutiling. So sometimes, you know, if Terran doesn't respect that, it doesn't push a bit later than usual or doesn't mass up a bit more, they can get caught off guard quite easily. But Ultra so far, you know, not in a rush to get his turrets out. Mutalisks are out though, so now is when the turrets should go down. And we should be, you know, a couple more SCVs here, but that should be cut soon. And then we should be getting the factory down ASAP. Kenzie is getting a, a nice uh, third base going, though, at top right. Well, here come those Mutalists. Range is not done. Generally, with the Foreman Academy, you're looking at like a 715 range timing. So that means that these Mutas have about 30 more seconds before that's going to be kicking in. Factory is about halfway done so ultra really crushing his build right now probably gonna opt into a tank push because of how quick it is meanwhile kenzie he's got top right going up i did notice that he built a hydrogen too so he's not pure mutalist here he's gonna be going mm -hmm. into standard lurker follow-up yeah i like this from kenzie it's very standard um especially going straight for the lurkers it's very solid doesn't really put pressure onto him to do much with these mutalisks except for delay and that's exactly what he's doing you can see Terran is still inside of his base not really pushing out just yet and the lurkers are going to go straight to or the hydralisks rather straight to the third base so this is going to be a really stable situation for zerg but at the same time double starport coming here for ultra so Terran's not really complaining either about this opening wow muta's got very lucky that that was a move command on those marines didn't take any damage meanwhile queen's nest going up so hive timing is going to be pretty good lurkers are going to be in position at top right at a very nice timing 815 is pretty standard for this opener double star port going up there's the fifth barracks for ultra as i stated before he loves to go really hard on the bio i'm sure a couple more barracks will be going up Pretty soon, range is done now, and Ultra really hasn't lost any of his bio ball, but at the same time, Kenzie hasn't lost any of his mutilus, so both players need to be careful as they move out. Looks like the bio ball is a little bit too big for Kenzie to want to engage, but that's so many links, I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't try and engage it. Yeah, and this is exactly what three hatch uh, can be, you know, can be good for is you always have these links to work with, like the, the Muta Ling. It's not too taxing on your economy, and Lurkers are already out. Actually, that was a six scan from Ultra, because he does see the stop Lurkers. He is going to be able to prepare, but the, the reality is, with the Muta Ling and the Lurkers, the thing is, Kenzie just lost track of these units. He does see it with the Overlord. Yeah, okay, the Overlord is going to see these units. So luckily for Kenzie, I mean, that could have been a disaster, because those, those Lurkers could have been picked off. Then the Natural would have been open. 
But still... Oh, the drones are transferring in the middle of the map! Drones? No. Get okay, no, he pulled them right. Up. Utilis. And they kind of just take a lot of damage there, but it's still fine. Now, lurkers are going to be repositioned. Oh, okay. They just repositioned a little bit. Meanwhile, Ultra should have his first couple of vessels coming out within the next few seconds. That is so much bio. And like I said, he loves to go for go hard on the racks. Six racks is already done. He might actually bust this. I think there's only one additional lurker there. What are the mutas doing? They're just AFK. No, that was that was a poor that attack was there good. from Ultra, and now he's gonna yeah. lose his whole Marine ball, and for nothing really. And you can't lose this uh, this group of Marines and medics because Zerg didn't really take any. The thing is, sometimes it's okay in TVZ to trade your army off uh, with Zerg because that's you know specifically when Zerg is on low econ, low econ. But in this game, because Zerg went for that three hatch play with the early fourth hatchery at the third base, and look, even the oh fifth hatchery God. already done. Dude, Kenzie's nuts, man. This is such a dominating position for Zerg to be in. Well, I mean, you kill off half the army. I mean, what's Terran going to do now? They don't have as much, and they he killed nothing. You might as well take a fourth base. What, what's the worst that can, that's going to happen? Okay, he's going to bust your fourth base, but you really didn't even lose any lurkers. I'm sure he's got... He has even more lurkers at top right somewhere. The filer mound is done. Second evolution chamber is going up. The fact that he has a second evolution chamber coming up means he got his evolution, his first one, much faster than usual. Usually that's the first evolution chamber going up. Yeah. So plus one armor, I'm sure, is going to be kicking in pretty soon. And because this is a three hatch opener, Kenzie's econ is absolutely bananas. Like usually my opinion is that ultras come out around 16 or 17 minutes but because nothing has happened and because the econ hasn't been delayed at all we may see something like 14 or 15 minute ultras we did see that defiler mound is already up so for now he's just going to kind of defend but it wouldn't shock me if we just see an excessive amount of uh zero units be reduced around the 15 minute mark yeah but at the same time ultras build allows him to to maintain like an upgrade advantage whereas you know sometimes when you go for the ebay first like the five racks variant it's a bit harder to have that pressure with the upgrade timings but this time around i mean ultra is ahead in the uh in the plus one weapons or whatever so that's gonna be that's gonna allow him to get a nice timing off before ultras come out or at least he's gonna be able to stay and irradiated a bunch of them, but that's only two vessels. I'm sure he has a couple more vessels at his main. He is expanding to the third base. Nidus goes down, but will Ultra be able to capitalize on that? But there's no Defiler here, so actually if he irradiated even just a couple Lurkers, there's only four. Okay, there's five, but soon to be only four. Uh, there could have been a window of opportunity. Maybe Ultra could try and bust that down. We do see that Ultra's decided that, okay, I can't bust. He's gonna put down a third command center at mid left. Ultralist Cavern going down for Kenzie as expected. His Econ is phenomenal right now. 130 supply to 100. That's pretty much the dream scenario. He's also got macro hatches going up. He's got Sunkins to help defend versus Ooh. drop. I was wondering if Ultra had drops anywhere, and he unloads in a really slick position. Actually, And there's no Nidus. No, yeah. That was the Nidus that just died. So actually, he will capitalize on that. And there's no units here. There's no Defiler. Yeah, there's no Defiler, but there are a decent amount of Lurkers. But as you mentioned, oh, upgrade thanks. advantage for Ultra, and he's going to plow through all of these Ultra, all of these Lurkers. And Ultra, uh, is he just going to kill top right yeah, completely? Uh, yeah, that, that's that's just what happens sometimes in this matchup, the double dropship. It's very risky to go for because, you know, generally Zergs are so good nowadays at defending against that type of play. That if it gets shut down, I mean, those were two dropships that could have been vessels. But, I mean, this amount of damage is huge. He's going to kill two hatcheries. He's going to kill a bunch of drones. I mean, Kenzie might be able to save this other hatchery at the natural. But behind this, Ultra does have a third base. I don't know, man. This is so, so, so hard to be in as Zerg. I mean, if he saves this hatchery, maybe. Well, there's a... Oh, okay, you got to cast Dark Swarm when you have actual units. Meanwhile, first macro hatch ended up falling. More lings are going to move across the map, but that hatchery is dangerously low. If he just focuses it, no, he's not going to get it. But regardless, the damage was crazy. Oh, he got plus one weapon on his ground? Oh, no. 
That was a massive misclick from Kenzie. Now yeah, he's going to be down like two upgrades. That's disastrous. That's <laughs> Ultras are totally worthless down two upgrades. So, oh, does kill the two vessels kind of a bit uh, ballsy there to go for the double irradiate. I mean, you just really need one. But, okay, Ultra is going to try and push into this natural. But it looks like Kenzie is going to be able to stabilize. The problem for Kenzie, oh my gosh. Unless this Nidus goes down before he gets more units there. No swarm up. The Nidus is taking damage. It can't go down, but it will. And all of a sudden, this base is still open. I mean, you don't know where the drops are. You don't know what's happening. Ultras are out, but they're slow. And, I mean, I think at this point, Ultra, or Ultra the player, has plus two weapons, right? So, against the plus one armor of Kenzie... Oh my god, these Marines are going to have a field day against the Ultras. Yeah, weapon advantage for Terran is amazing versus Ultralis, especially when the Ultralis still don't even have the chitinous plating on them. We can see that the Nidus has completed or is about to complete back at the natural of top right and the natural of uh, bottom right. Meanwhile, Ultra, he's got about a 50 supply lead. Now he's doing a really good job consistently reinforcing all over the map. Vessel count, okay. That is decent. He's got four right now. He did lose a couple doing an eraser, but actually Ultra's kind of killing it right now. He, If he had a couple fire bats, he might be able to plow through, but as played, he's not able to get through that Dark Swarm, and now Ultra should pop out of those Nidus to help save the day. Yeah, Ultra is playing a solid game. He also has the mineral only, they just playing very, very solidly. Look at these irradiates, man. Yeah, the Radiates taking down all the Defilers, even takes down two Ultras too. So this is fantastic play from Terran. He's going to end up saving these vessels, I think, also. Meanwhile, Ultra also took his mineral only. He's on four base. He's yeah. crushing it right now. He's got BCs coming yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, that's what I was trying to t uh, tell you, man. Ultra is... <laughs> he's good. Like, he's actually... Honestly, I look at Ultra's play and I almost... I mean, I think he's getting up there easily with uh, Terra and Dandy, if not have surpassed them in, like, certain areas of the of play. I mean, this is just immaculate play. Like, there's not really much you can say against it. Again, the two dropship play was a bit of a, a dice roll. You know, generally, uh, some Terrans do prefer going for just mass vessels because you just don't want to roll the dice on getting those drops completely countered. But after that, Ultra, just everything he's doing, you know, double expanding, triple starport, it's very standard. Look, his APM is up. He's making units all over the place, getting everything irradiated. I mean, he's playing an absolutely phenomenal late game TVZ, and Kenzie just cannot keep up. Yeah, this is actually very good from Ultra. He's even shutting down the natural. Now, it looks like the PCs are going to bleed off and end up dying. But for now, he's still putting pressure down at top right. Score is going to be taken out. Scourge will end up you know, killing these PCs. Eventually. Oh, so, look oh, at this, I man. This guy's nuts. I didn't even see it. So bot top right's gone. Kinsey's having to deal with BCs at the same time. Meanwhile, he's trying to stage a counterattack at mid left. Looks like these Ultras will shut down the mid left base. But this is just fantastic play from Ultra. Wow, those links might save the day for now. Okay, now BCs are gonna. Well, no, they are gonna fall. No, they're not. Ooh. One survives. It has 12 kills. Absolutely broken. Honestly, if you're Zerg and you're getting into late game, you 100% need to get the Carapace upgrade because once, you know, the Scourge not getting plus or one shot by BCs is absolutely massive, but sometimes it's hard to find that gas that you need for that upgrade. But anyway, I mean, Ultra's just here. playing. Yeah, he's just playing out of his mind. He completely slapped down Kenzie. I can't believe he even had that double dropship. Uh, going. I wonder if those were the initial drops or if he just rebuilt them, but completely picking apart Kenzie in the late game here. And honestly, if I'm Siki and I'm watching this, I'm a bit scared, man. Yeah, this was really good play from Ultra. And at the same time, look at the minimap. He's reinforcing bottom right. Like, this is... He's a madman. He's all over the place. Top right, main. Top right, natural. At yeah. bottom right, also, he's got triple starport. I'm sure he's building more BCs. He defended mid left at the same time. He's even got an SCV at the top left. So it looks like he's trying to expand there too. And he's just crushing Kenzie. Like this wasn't even close. Yeah, man. I mean, 
It's crazy. Some so, well, we'll have to see here. You know, this is polypoid. Is uh, we'll have to see how altered the. I mean, we're talking about we're talking like the game's already over, but this is so so incredibly hard for Triple Zerg to come back because Triple Starport, uh, Battle Cruiser, just flying around in the middle of the map can just do whatever it wants. Yeah, Kenzie is gonna call it GG.